Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, with a digital rebar episode that will blow your mind. Uh, actually, seriously, this, this probably will. Uh, <laughs> it's some sort of fun. Um, we, we, I, built a uh, digital rebar provision in Amazon, something you would think not much use for since it's a bare metal provisioning infrastructure. But, you know, sometimes we're just building workflows that don't need bare metal booting. They just need to get their stuff done. And so uh, I installed Digital Rebar here in uh, Amazon. It's just a little CentOS Nano, so it's a half gig of RAM, tiny, tiny little infrastructure. Um, I'm going to need this private IP in a second, and I'll show you why. But what I've done is I've made it so that we can boot machines and join them into Amazon without booting them. So we've always talked about this. Uh, we can just join machines, uh, but we made it so that it's part of the discovery workflow. So I have a digital rebar uh, infrastructure here with a, a nice little discover workflow. Just as normal discover. There's a AWS discover. This is all in tip. So new, new stuff. Uh, it's going to have to get through the process and release and it's very prototypey. Um, so there's, we haven't built like a AWS plugin yet or anything like that. So we, we want some feedback. Uh, know if this is interesting for you. And if it is, let us know, talk to us, because uh, we want to interact with you and see, see if this is useful technology. Right now it's a prototype. Uh, so there's an AWS Discover. I'll show you what that does. But it's just a regular discovery uh, process. And I'll, I actually can do some Kubernetes work on top of it. We'll talk about that. That's also new, just to show you the, how the, the workflows work. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, create a new instance in my environment. Uh, let's see, and I just need a, a marketplace. Who wants CentOS? Just, now I'm doing CentOS because that's uh, Sledgehammer-esque. Uh, let's see, I want it out of the marketplace, Sent7, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can just pick a nano for this. It could be any size. I'm just, I'm gonna pick um, a micro and then what I want to do is, uh, this is actually pretty straightforward, I, this is all I need. So I can go in, uh, launch this one machine, uh, say go, oops, sorry, pick my key pair, thank you. And this is just going to bring up a, a normal machine in Amazon. No special nothing, it's just Amazon machine, all that looks pretty good. If we view our instances, we'll see this new instance coming up. Uh, node one. It's going to be sort of silly. So I can do that. Um, what this node is going to do is it's going to run a join script. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and because I didn't tell it to, to run the join script, I'm going to have to do this one by hand. Uh, I want to show you what that looks like. And my dog wants to tell you that you don't have to. That's why he's barking. He's saying you don't have to do this by hand, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, script and I'm going to launch more like this. And what we're going to do here is, I know, I know, I'm going to tell them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come into our instance details and we are going to go to advanced details and we can actually do a join script here that takes that machine and uh, literally joins it into that uh, instance that I created. Now it's using the internal address. Uh, here I'm actually joining the external public address, of course, um, which I've exposed 8092 uh, on, which is our API port. That's what you need to be able to access something externally. And so I need to uh, not just, I need to actually know this IP address. It's always important to know the IP address. Um, or the, I guess the DNS, internal DNS would work too. But So for that, uh, let me actually bring up my uh, EC2 instance. Here we go, in a new window. Thank you. Because I wasn't smart enough to write it down. DRP, internal private IP address. Thank you. So for this case, what I can do is when I'm bringing the machine up, uh, let's see this over here internal IP address so what I'm doing here is I'm literally saying uh, when you initialize the machine just run this curl curl this script 
uh, machines join up. This is the new feature, the new thing. Normally we use startup on a um, Pixie Boot. In this case, join up is specialized for virtual machines. So it's not Amazon specific. Uh, and then uh, sudo bash. So we're just going to run and start it. And so that's pretty straightforward. I can go ahead and take this. This looks great. Launch it. Take my key. Thank you. Oops, and I forgot to tell it to do more than one. So let me let me go back and look at my instances and take this guy and then I'm going to create another one of these. That should be pretty straightforward. Let's make sure that my instance details are there. Yep, it remembered. What I forgot to do is put in a number here. So if I'd put two in there, I would have had what I wanted. So that looks good. Um, all these things are, are moving along very nicely. Uh, my first node, which is already running and still initializing. So we gotta, we got to wait for a second. Now I don't know which one it is. Whichever one finishes first, I suppose. Um, here, this one. Okay, so that looks great. What I'm going to do in this in this node that is manual, I'm going to take this node, I'm going to take its external interface, public IPs somewhere in here, yay. And then uh, let's SSH to CentOS. So now that I'm on the machine, all I have to do is, I don't need bin bash, I can just run that uh, script. Yeah, that's not the IP address I want. Let's come back over here. Pick up the machine. So let's see, our private IP address, once again, over here. And uh, I can pick up, that's the IP address. So what I'm, what I'm going to do over here is copy and paste things awkwardly, which I'm very good at. That didn't do it what I wanted at all. Grab the IP address, grab IP address. So now what you'll see when I do this, um, it's going to run this join up script. And that literally goes in, creates the machine, just like normal discovery, and then runs the, the script. You can look at this. It's in the discovery um, uh, boot env. But the cool thing over here now is if I jump to my machines, you will see I've all these machines. Now, I just created the one, but these other ones were done um, automatically because I included that, that script. I hate to tell you, that's most of the demo, that one thing. It's pretty nice. Um, but it's actually running the script, and the, the, the benefit of doing it with this by hand is that I'll actually be able to show you um, what's going on behind the scenes, because when I start taking work, it'll show up in, in the script because of the way, way I ran it. Um, but in this case, now all these machines are in Sledgehammer Wait. Uh, that stage includes the AWS discovery, which means that it, it captures things like the instance type, the ID, the zone, the provider, the name, public address. So all this information that you want to script against is included because I, I added the AWS discovery stage. And because of the way it's working, if you we could create stages for other cloud providers, be super simple. And then you can embed that into whatever logic you want. Now, it's faking Sledgehammer in this prototype. so. It thinks it's Sledgehammer. If you change bootems from Sledgehammer to something else, uh, it will uh, not work. It'll try and reboot the machine. So just be warned that that's a thing you have to account for. So if I took these machines and I added them into, say, a Kubernetes um, profile, and then because I've done this once before, I need to go ahead and reset the cluster. So I'm going to clear all my things. And you'll notice if you've seen other demos of Digital Rebar, this is exactly what Digital Rebar demos look like. Um, this one, in this case, they're super fast. 
Um, so it's it's all it's all good. I've built this workflow. Um, so this is the discovery, right? I showed you that already. And now I just have a standard Kubernetes workflow with the difference that I didn't have to mount the disks. So this is just uh, the live installer that starts with, right, with Docker install and then works through the process. And so if I come into bulk actions, like you've seen me do a, a whole bunch of times, I can come in, run this crib workflow, and it's starting the install process. Now, uh, I've said prototype like a ton of times, prototype so we haven't adapted crib to this environment and so there's some IP address things for the workers but the, the the lead node comes up just fine in this process and pretty darn quickly but if I flash over to the actual one of these machines what you'll see is this is actually the same data I'm getting from the runner so this is the runner running um, normally it, it happens behind the scenes and you'd have to have to have a session in it um, because I only because I ran the runner by hand are we getting this data. Normally this is going to be coming through um, it's going to be coming through the runner logs, which is exactly what's happening in this in this case. So everything happening here happening over here too. And uh, just doing the install. Uh, <laughs> and everything you expect digital rebar to do, digital rebar is doing just in Amazon uh, and the benefit here is that the machines are cheap they're very fast to spin up um, and I have a working environment so I could bring up a couple of different uh, environments once we actually build some deeper integrations I'd be able to create machines and do other things like that and have them up and running in you know two or three minutes so I could work through uh, very fast iterations on this you know crib for example um, you know, I could build a pretty significant cluster and do some performance testing and play without having to, you know, spend a lot of money or find a lot of hardware, um, test things out, work on timing, all sorts of stuff that you would just normally do. Um, and this is no surprise, this, you know, nothing we're building is really that metal specific except the Pixie, um, well, okay, the Pixie, the boot provision, things like that, but it, it, all the post work should run anywhere. And this is showing you that it does. I hope this is helpful. Um, this is really interesting prototypey work for us um, with the type of clustering we do and the way we share data back and forth. It's a pretty unique way to be able to build and automate clusters. Um, and this just sort of extends the reach into uh, any infrastructure you want to play with. Love to have your feedback on it. Um, this is Rob Hirschfeld. If you want more details, uh, join us on our Slack at, at um, uh, which you can get to by starting at rebar.digital or racken.com. Happy to talk with you, help you out, get your ideas, see how things are going in general.